Good evening and welcome. I'm Dave Morrison. I'm the manager of the Camden Opera House. Typically, right now, I would talk for a little while about all the great shows we have coming up in 2021, and we do have some great shows coming up. And then I would probably pivot and talk for a little bit about our community arts fund and suggest you consider donating because that's how we fund the Soundcheck concert series. But the truth is, all that information can be found on our website, which is at camdenoperahouse.com, uh, and, and I would just invite you to go there. This is our final show for 2020. So if you don't mind, I would like to talk for just a second about gratitude. It's been a challenging year. It's been a hard year. It's been a strange year. It's been a frustrating year and a scary year. But still, I have seen so many people bring their best selves and reach really deep down and find strength and patience and creativity and good sense and care for their neighbors. And I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful to live where I do. I'm grateful for the privilege of booking this theater and helping bring music to you. I'm very grateful for my coworkers. I'm grateful for the artists and performers who come here and share their gifts with us. And I'm grateful that the town of Camden cares about arts and entertainment and this beautiful theater. And even though it's only dates on a calendar, I'm grateful for the new year and all the possibilities it brings with it. So tonight, I'm glad that we can come together and that we can pause for an hour and listen to some beautiful music and celebrate the season. And so to you, I want to say thank you, and we'll see you next year. And now, will you please join me in welcoming our friends, Castle Bay. Thank you so much, Dave. That's just wonderful to have that warm welcome here in this beautiful theater. We so appreciate your team and the town of Camden and uh, the opportunity to be here to share this music with you. Even though you aren't here physically, we, uh, we are really enjoying the idea that you're sitting there with a glass of something and uh, getting settled to enjoy some music with us. So um, we were choosing music from New England for this holiday season, looking back into archives and, and trying to find some good Christmas songs. Well, interestingly, Christmas, <laughs> no, Christmas was not big in New England until the late 1800s. 1870, um, Charles Dickens came to Boston and shamed everyone into uh, enjoying Christmas. So there aren't a lot of Christmas songs specifically from New England. We've included some new songs and, and some from archives that we have been examining. But uh, most of them are about that Courier and Ives uh, idea of beautiful, sunny, snowy, cold days and, and the winter nights with the moon shining on the snow. So we'll, uh, we'll just share those through the music with you. We thought we'd start with a poem, a poem by Camden's own Edna St. Vincent Millay called Winter Night. Pile high the hickory and the light chestnut log struck by the blight. Welcome in the winter night. The day has gone to hewing and felling, sawing and drawing wood to the dwelling for the night of talk and storytelling. These are the hours that give the edge to the blunted ax and the bent wedge. Straighten the saw and lighten the sledge. Here are questions and reply, and the fire reflected in the thinking eye. So peace, and let the bobcat cry. Tis winter now, the fall in the snow has left the heavens so coldly clear, all buried The earth seems dead and drear. 
and yet God's love is not withdrawn. His light within the keen air breathes. His beauty pits the crimson dawn and claws the branches with glittering wreaths. song was by Samuel Longfellow, who was Henry Wadsworth's younger brother. He was a Unitarian minister, um, educated at Bowdoin College and Harvard, and edited several books of hymns and penned several hymns himself, uh, in excess of, of 30, I think. That was one of them. Native song, Samuel Longfellow. Well, you may have detected a little bit of Celtic influence in that melody, and indeed a lot of the music that we find here in New England has that root, the Celtic root, Irish, Scottish, Scots-Irish, English roots. And um, this is a, a tune, a melody, an air, from a collection made in uh, Boston by Elias Howe in 1830. He collected a song tunes, dance tunes, airs, and published them. So they went out into the community and people learned them and, and uh, played them in their homes. This tune is called um, Cold Winter Morning. And we put it together with a, a newer tune, actually made by the group Altan, Mike Kelly of Altan, who made their debut in the US right here in Maine. Um, and I wonder if it was winter, I didn't check to be sure, but this tune is called The Snowy Path. And so we have cold winter morning and the snowy path.
Thanks. That's the snowy path. Um, and just a little amusing side, that's a slip jig. So uh, very appropriate. <clears throat> snowy well, path. Uh, <clears throat> this next song is by a couple of local musicians, uh, Nick Apollonio and Bob Stewart, who found themselves in a kind of a frosty situation. They wow. tell me that the Celsius and Fahrenheit scales met that night, <clears throat> which is 40 below. And allegedly, the whiskey froze. <laughs> the night the whiskey froze. <laughs> Covers up over our heads the night the whiskey froze. I've never known of a colder night. The wind was blowing with all its might, and the mercury dropped out of sight the night the whiskey froze. We wore our hats and mittens too to keep ourselves from turning blue. That's what we did, and so would you on a night that whiskey froze. And we were safe in the raging storm. We snuggled and cuddled all night to keep warm. But nine months later, a child was born from the night the whiskey froze. <laughs> But nine months later, a child was born from the night the whiskey froze. that uh, time has moved on and I don't have to live in those compromising situations anymore. <clears throat> well, um, here's another local uh, interpretation of a, an old Scottish song, a beautiful melody that's very familiar, um, but the lyrics uh, depict a, a very familiar cold winter situation. The writer of the lyrics is Lou Grubb from Rockland. He writes some wonderful songs and poems. And so this is a song from Lou. Oh 
to that one. All right. Well, you do have to make light of this darkness. Uh, my son lives in Norway, so it's even darker there for him. But, but that, that dark time when you just really crave the sunlight, you crave the light. Imagine no electricity. So for millennia, people lived in wonder at the return of the light and the return of that that warmth that um, sustains us. Here's a song that I made uh, about that return of that light and how we can hark back to remembering those times when people did not have light. It's called The Darkest Night of the Year. Oh, 
that dark night, um, we're going to do a song that we do find in the New England tradition. It's kind of a rare song. Uh, another place we find it is in the Appalachian tradition. A lot of the old stories that were edited out of the Bible end up in the folk tradition. This is one of them. It's uh, not exactly a Christmas song. It's more about a pre-Christmas song. <laughs> so in the Apocrypha, the cherry, the legend of the cherry tree.
poetry carol. Well, we're into old songs now, and this one is uh, probably one of the oldest in the uh, New England tradition. It's actually French, and uh, came over this, the tune came over with the French priests who went amongst the Native Americans teaching the gospel, and they decided to write new lyrics that reflected the experience here in the New World and using images that perhaps the, the Native people might appreciate. Um, that's the song. The tune before it is my own, and it's, uh, it's just a little musical portrait of a very cold, crisp, dark winter night with the moon shining on the snow. The Winter Moon and the Huron Carol. Thank you. 
And as the winter stars grew dim, wandering hunters heard the hymn, Jesus The Huron Carol and the Winter Moon. Oh, come on. Well, uh, this is another newer song. Um, my friend John Morris had a house on Pemaquid Point. Um, he passed away a few years ago, but he was well known for his soundtracks, songs for movie soundtracks, and also for uh, Broadway productions. Um, he had Welsh heritage, and uh, he made uh, music for a production of How Green Was My Valley, known as uh, A Time for Singing. And the story involves a tragedy in a, in a Welsh mining town. And during that, that uh, terrible time, people look for solace in the music. And uh, this song is um, kind of harkens back to that beautiful old song, The Three Ships. I know. Fifty ways to leave your levers. <clears throat> Three ships. One day in times of long ago, out for Camden, don't you think? <laughs> the beautiful ships. Well, let's see, what have we got? Ah, well, speaking of gifts. Um, Here's a, a tune. There's a song that goes with it, too. But it's a tune that's been used by Aaron Copeland, Appalachian Spring, uh, Sidney Carter, Lord of the Dance. Even Michael Flatley used this tune. But it came from Maine. It was written by Brother John Brackett, a Shaker member of the the uh, Shaker community in Alfred, Maine in 1835. Little did he know. 
where it would go. Our version of Simple Gifts. are a big part of this season, uh, people giving to each other, receiving gifts from one another. Some of them are homemade, some of them are elaborate. Um, here's a song that uh, goes back to the late 18th century, and uh, we did find a version, several versions here in New England. The song was made as a response to the change in the calendar uh, when uh, the British Isles finally joined the rest of Europe and and adjusted their calendar by 12 days. And so you know what I'm talking about, the 12 days of Christmas. Some people rioted in the streets. They thought they'd lost 12 days out of their lives. And other people um, decided they would just party for 12 days. What a great solution. So the song harkens back to, uh, to that time when people didn't quite know what to do with the 12 days. However, Mrs. Erskine only oh. sang 11 verses, so we don't know what the 12th yeah. day is. This was collected from a Mrs. Erskine from Dixfield, Maine in 1940 by Helen Flanders. And um, strangely, she only sings 11 verses of the song. We were very taken by this very unusual melody. So get ready for something really different. <laughs> My true love gave to me one plump partridge on a pear tree. The second day of Christmas, my true love gave to me two fine ducks, one plump partridge on a pear tree. The third day of Christmas, my true love gave to me three turtle doves, two fine ducks, one plump partridge on a pear tree. The fourth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me four French hens, three turtle Seventh day of Christmas, my true love gave to me seven swamps. 
the swimming six, geese are laying five, gold rings, four French hens, three turtle doves, two fine ducks, one plump partridge on a pear tree. The eighth day of Christmas my true love gave to me, eight ladies dancing, seven swans are swimming, six geese are laying five, gold rings, four French hens, three turtle doves, two fine ducks, one plump partridge on a pear tree. learned that from her grandmother, and I'm told that um, she, she was uh, made to pay a forfeit if she could not sing the whole song completely without a mistake. I guess I need to pay a forfeit. Uh, did I, make a mistake? I did. <laughs> My goodness. The bulls of bellowing are very interesting. That's something different. Um, and the maids are sweeping. Well, anyway, we wonder what the twelfth day was all about. It's time for our public service announcement. Uh, we have established a home for unwanted fruitcakes. Uh, we leave a big box at the end of the driveway, and if you get a fruitcake that you, because believe it or not, there are people who don't I like fruitcakes. I can't believe it. Yeah, it, they must not be getting the right kind of fruitcakes. Yeah, now our old New England fruitcakes are, are moist and mm. lovingly wrapped in a linen cloth soaked in rum or brandy. Rum, by or, gum weeks or months or sometimes years. Um, however... Because nobody wants to eat them. <laughs> we do. We love fruitcake. But uh, the typical fruitcake over by, as our friends say, is covered with this marzipan frosting that resembles nothing so much as concrete. Indeed. So this song, actually, um, we found five versions of this song in the um, collections made here. Uh, so very popular song about fruitcake, Miss Fogarty's Christmas Cake. Oh, yes. As I sat by my window one evening, the letter man came unto me, and he brought a nice neat invitation. It was asking me over for tea. Well, I knew it was Fogarty sent it, so I went just for friendship's sake. But the first thing they gave me to tackle was a piece of the Christmas cake. Here's the recipe. There were plums and prunes and berries, raisins and currants and cinnamon too. There were nuts and cloves and cherries, but the crust it was made out of glue. Ew. There were caraway seeds in abundance Twould give you a fine toothache Twould kill a man twice to be eating A slice of Miss Fogarty's Christmas cake Now O'Malley, he wanted to try some But really it wasn't no use For they worked at it over an hour But they couldn't get none of it loose so Nellie went for the hatchet, while Kelly he went for a saw. But they only succeeded in smashing 
the hatchet and Kelly's left jaw. There were plums and prunes and berries, berries, raisins and currants and cinnamon too. There were nuts and cloves and cherries, but the crust it was made out of glue. There were caraway seeds in abundance. Twould give you a mind to think. Twould kill a man twice to be eating a slice of Miss Fogarty's Christmas cake. Well, O'Malley came down with a colic. McNulty complained of his head. McPadgett lay down on the sofa, and he swore that he wished he was dead. Miss O'Brien went into hysterics, and she started to wiggle and shake. And the men swore they all had been poisoned after eating Miss Fogarty's cake. There were plums and prunes and berries, berries, raisins and currants and cinnamon too. There were nuts and cloves and cherries, but the crust it was made out of glue. There were caraway seeds in abundance, twould give you a fine toothache. Twould kill a man twice to be eating a slice of Miss Fogarty's Christmas cake. Miss O. Miss Fogarty, proud as a peacock, kept smiling and blinking away till she tripped over Flanagan's brogans and she spilled a whole growing a tea. Gil Hooley, she says, you're not eating. Have a little bit more for my sake. Oh, no, says I, Miss Fogarty, please. I've had quite enough of your cake. There were plums and prunes and berries, berries, raisins and currants and cinnamon too. There were nuts and cloves and cherries, but the crust it was made out of glue. There were caraway seeds in abundance, twould give you a fine toothache. Twould kill a man twice to be, take a slice of Miss Fogarty's Christmas cake. Then a man came in from the army, a sergeant or some such like. He had a big box full of matches and a hundred weight of dynamite. We went 500 yards, well, maybe seven, and we watched while the fuse flame raised. <laughs> <laughs> the house it went up to the heavens The confection was still in place There were plums and prunes and berries Berries, raisins and currants and cinnamon too There were nuts and cloves and cherries But the crust it was made out of blue There were caraway seeds in abundance Twould give you a fine toothache Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, yes, that family gatherings around can be tricky business. Um, but those beautiful postcards, courier and Ives, the, the sleigh dashing over the snow to grandmother's house is a big part of our 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 um, image of New England Christmas. So here's a brand new song um, called Grandmother's House in the Snow. And um, these are days when we have to just imagine those wonderful times together uh, in the old homestead, Grandmother's House in the Snow. <laughs> Winter is coming, we're ready for fun. The skating, the cider, the cinnamon buns, and the cheerful bright smiles as warm as the sun at grandmother's house in the snow. The journey will take us an hour or more, but we never will mind, for we know what's in store. There's a light at the window and hugs at the door at grandmother's house in the snow. I've been to the city with bright shining lights and tropical islands with blossoming nights but I think that there really is nothing as nice as grandmother's house in the snow.
forest and look for a tree Wading through snowdrifts dear up to our knees There are starry nights kept up by singling and teasing At grandmother's house in the snow And though the years pass and the seasons they turn With laughter and tears and the lessons we've learned We'll gather together and always return To grandmother's house in the snow Grandmother's house in the snow bit of Norman Rockwell there. <laughs> Grandmother's house. Well, we did, we did a song by Samuel Longfellow, so we thought we'd give his brother Henry equal time. This is a poem that he wrote during the Civil War when the country was being torn apart, and he was discouraged. His wife had also been killed, and his, his son badly wounded in the war. But in spite of that, he found hope. So this poem has been set to music many times. We're going to do the modern uh, Johnny Marks version. I heard the bells on Christmas Day is interested in uh, possibly taking some of this music home with them, you can go to our website at castlebay.net and we do have a new recording called The Winter Moon that has um, a number of these songs on that recording. If you still have a CD player, um, there are also downloads available, but um, the, the CD cover is kind of attractive. So The Winter Moon is our latest recording. And we're going to finish up with a uh, a wonderful, jolly song that, that wishes good health to everyone, which is certainly appropriate, um, especially this year. We looked for versions of these Was Hale songs here in New England, and in fact, we could not find any. And that may be because of prohibition, which began here in Maine in 1853. Um, they cut down the apple orchards so that no one could make hard cider. Of course, nobody touched a drop in uh, New England from 1853 until the end of Prohibition in the 1900s. Ha ha. But um, yes, I have a song about that too. <laughs> but there are uh, there are no Was Hale songs that we could find. 
here in New England. So we had to go further south to Kentucky, where, of course, they're famous for their white lightning and, um, and illicit liquor. So this is the Kentucky Wassail, and we've combined it with the Gloucestershire Wassail. There are dozens, if not hundreds, of Wassail songs in England, but we'll just do the one. And uh, in case you didn't know, Wassail is the Anglo-Saxon word for good health. So we'll end with this, and again, just, just tremendous heartfelt thanks to the Camden Opera House, Indeed. the team, to the city of Camden, town of Camden, excuse me, um, and to all of you for tuning in to share a little bit of lightness in this dark time. And I uh, hope that we will see you again in the new year. So was hail. Toast is white and our ear is brown, our bold it is me.
shade of the white maple tree, but the wassailing bowl will drink to thee. Oh, oh, sail, oh, sail over the town, our toast it is white and is our hill it is brown. Our bowl it is made of the white maple tree, but the wassailing bowl will drink to thee. Oh, sail, oh, sail over the town. Thank you all. Thank you all, everyone.